The Truth Value Judgment Task is a research tool for investigating children's language understanding. Some sentences have more than one meaning. They are ambiguous. The Truth Value Judgment Task enables researchers to determine what meanings children assign to sentences that are ambiguous for adults. But more importantly, the task enables researchers to determine when sentences are not ambiguous for children due to linguistic principles that exclude meanings. The Truth Value Judgment Task can inform us about whether or not children adhere to the same linguistic principles as adults. Let's begin with an example of a sentence that has two meanings. The teacher is giving the lecture while she is eating pizza. In this sentence, the pronoun she can be used to refer to the teacher, or it can be used to refer to some female student. On one meaning, the sentence is true if the teacher is giving the lecture while she, the teacher, is eating pizza. On this meaning, the sentence is a true description of this picture. In addition, the sentence is true in a situation in which the teacher is giving the lecture while a female student is eating pizza. Now let's see what happens if we swap the pronoun she and the noun phrase the teacher. Here is the sentence that results. She is giving the lecture while the teacher is eating pizza. Notice that one of the two meanings of the pronoun has disappeared. In this sentence, the pronoun she can only be used to refer to the female student. The pronoun cannot be used to refer to the teacher. According to linguistic theory, an abstract principle prevents the pronoun she from referring to the teacher in this sentence. But there is another possible explanation. Perhaps the pronoun she cannot be used to refer to the teacher simply because it comes first in the sentence. This explanation will not work, however. To see this, let's make a change to the first sentence again. This time, we will reposition the entire clause that contains the pronoun she. We will move this clause to the front of the sentence so the pronoun she precedes the noun phrase the teacher once again. Here is the sentence that results. While she is eating pizza, the teacher is giving the lecture. This sentence is also ambiguous. Although the pronoun she comes first, it can be used to refer either to the female student or to the teacher. The sentence provides true descriptions of two different situations. Consider the unambiguous sentence again. She is giving the lecture while the teacher is eating pizza. The fact that the pronoun she can only refer to the female student in this sentence cannot be explained by a linear strategy. This constraint on meaning is enforced by a linguistic principle based on sentence structure. This illustrates how linguistic principles can eliminate sentence meanings. Our illustration appealed to your intuitions as an adult speaker of English. However, young children cannot be tested in the same way we test adults. To document children's knowledge of linguistic principles, we need to use a different research tool. This is where the truth value judgment task enters into the equation. The truth value judgment task presents sentences in story contexts. One experimenter acts out the stories and a second experimenter plays the role of a puppet who watches the stories alongside the child. After each story concludes, the puppet says what it thinks happened in the story. We explain to the child that the puppet doesn't always pay close attention to the stories. The child's task is to tell the puppet if it was right or wrong. That is, if the puppet's statement was true or false. In making up a story, there are some important factors to consider. First, it's important to avoid what are called type 1 errors. A type 1 error is when a researcher gets the predicted result, but for the wrong reason. To avoid type 1 errors, researchers must stack the cards against their own experimental hypothesis. There are several ways to do this. At this point, I will mention just one way to avoid type 1 errors. Suppose you are talking to a friend, but you don't understand something that your friend has said. There are lots of ways to deal with this situation. For example, you might ask your friend to repeat what he said. But there is one thing that you would not do. You would not tell your friend that what he said was false. To avoid type 1 errors, the truth value judgment task incorporates this insight that we don't contradict someone if we don't understand what they have said. We use this insight to provide conclusive evidence that children know linguistic principles. Children's knowledge of linguistic principles is revealed if they consistently judge sentences to be false. 
This is called the condition of falsification. We're about to work through a story. The plot centers around four characters. Three of the characters are involved in a jumping contest, Big Bird, Dora, and the Troll. The fourth character, Buzz, judges the contest. Suppose the test sentence is, he said that the troll was the best jumper. Suppose the experimental hypothesis is that children know that the pronoun he cannot be used to refer to the troll. The pronoun can only refer to some other male character in the story, Buzz say. The condition of falsification instructs us to construct a story in which Buzz does not say that the troll is the best jumper. In the story, Buzz says that Big Bird is the best jumper. If children know that the pronoun he can only refer to Buzz, then they will judge the test sentence to be false. On the other hand, the story is also constructed so that children will judge the test sentence to be true if they do not know the linguistic principle. That is, children will judge the test sentence to be true if children allow the pronoun he to refer to the troll. This is achieved in the story by having the troll say that he, the troll, is the best jumper. So there are two steps to satisfying the condition of falsification. First, we make the test sentence a true statement about the story if a child lacks the linguistic principle. Second, we make the test sentence a false statement if the child knows the linguistic principle. Another feature of the task is worth mentioning. The story should be constructed to make it clear to the child why the test sentence is false. To achieve this, at some point in the story, it should look as though the test sentence is going to turn out to be true. In the example story, it looks like Buzz is going to tell the troll that he is the best jumper. Of course, for the sentence to be false, Buzz must judge someone else to be the best jumper. In designing stories, we distinguish between a possible outcome and the actual outcome. The possible outcome is that point in the story where it looks as though the test sentence is going to turn out to be true. However, the actual outcome makes the test sentence false. We'll now run through the truth value judgment task. First, the experimenter introduces the setup and the characters. The story should be engaging, so the child will pay close attention to the story and to what the puppet says happened in the story. So, this story. Oliver is about a jumping competition. Okay, now we've got Buzz here. Buzz is the judge. Okay, he's the judge because he won the jumping competition last year. So this year he gets to be the judge. All right, and these are the people taking part in the competition. Okay, so let's see who we have. The judge introduces a prize that goes to the winner. The prize is coloured pasta. The judge also explains what the contestants must do to win the prize. All right, guys. So today we're, ha we're going to have a jumping competition. Okay, so we've got these things for you to jump over. We have a log, we have some barrels, and we have a bench. All right, and each of you are going to have a turn at jumping over these things. And then at the end, I'm going to decide who was the best jumper and I'll give that person a piece of coloured pasta, okay? The contestants take turns at jumping. Dora goes first. We're going to have Dora, okay? So Dora's going to go first. But she's not successful. All right, well, let's see. Let's see how I go. I'm going to take a run off and run and jump. Oh, just made it over the log. Oh, okay, now there are these great big barrels. Um, Let's see how I go. I'm going to jump. Oh no, I knocked over. I knocked over some barrels. Oh dear. Well, maybe I can finish well with this bench. I'll just jump over the bench. Oh, there we go. All right, well, that wasn't too bad. Next, it's the troll's turn. turn the oh. troll completes the course successfully. All right, my turn. Let's see, I'm pretty good at jumping. So I'm just going to take a run off and I'll just run and jump over the log. That was pretty easy. And now, let's see, these barrels are a bit tall. They might be a bit harder, but I'll try my best. I'll just run, jump. Oh, I made it. I made it over the barrels. Oh, and now the bench, jump. Oh, I did it. All right, that was pretty good, I think. I'll just stand over here with Dora. All right, good work, troll. Now, 
Now it's your turn, Big Bird. Now it's Big Bird's turn. Big Bird clears all the obstacles and in record time. So I am just going to run and jump. And that was pretty easy. And now I'll just jump over the barrels and jump over the bench. All right. Buzz then considers the performance by Dora and the Troll. Well, Dora, I'm afraid you knocked over some of the barrels, didn't she? So I'm afraid you can't win, okay? So you're out of the running for being the best jumper. Now you troll, you managed to jump over everything. So that was really good. Um, but So you could be the best jumper, but I'm gonna have to have a think about how Big Bird went first, okay, before I decide. Buzz's comment about the troll establishes the possible outcome. That is, at this point in the story, it's reasonable to suppose that Buzz will say that the troll is the best jumper. This part of the story introduces the actual outcome. Buzz judges someone other than the troll to be the best jumper. This satisfies the condition of falsification. All right, now Big Bird. Uh, let's see, you jumped over everything as well, okay? Plus, you were the fastest. The child has reminders of what happened in the story because Buzz puts a piece of pasta in front of Big Bird. Okay, so you are the best jumper. I'm going to give you a coloured piece of pasta. There you go for being the best jumper. The troll rejects Buzz's decision. He declares himself the winner and he takes a piece of pasta. If the child permits the pronoun in the test sentence to refer to the troll, then the story makes the test sentence true because the troll says that he is the best jumper. So you know what, I'm going to go and I'm going to grab a piece of pasta because I was the best jumper actually. The puppet tells the child what he thinks took place in the story. The puppet mentions Big Bird first and he mentions the troll last. This is another way of stacking the cards against the experimental hypothesis. If the child's interpretation of the pronoun is influenced by the order in which the characters are mentioned, then the pronoun will be taken to refer to the troll, since the puppet mentioned the troll last. In that story, there was the judge, Buzz, and there was Dora, there was Big Bird, and there was Troll. And I know one thing that happened. He said Troll was the best jumper. Is that right? No. If the child indicates that the puppet was wrong, then the child is asked to tell the puppet what really happened. The child's reason for rejecting the puppet statement is important evidence that the child understood the story and rejected the puppet statement for the right reason. The child's statement should mention the actual outcome, the fact that Buzz said that Big Bird was the best jumper. No, what really happened? What really happened in the story? Buzz said Big Bird is the best jumper. He oh. did too, didn't he? <laughs> oh, silly Mr. Panda got a bit mixed up, didn't he? Thanks for telling me. <laughs> this video illustrates how the Truth Value Judgment Task can be used to assess children's knowledge of linguistic principles. The task has been used to investigate many different principles in many languages. We hope that this has been a useful demonstration about one important tool for conducting research on child language.